Okay, I poured the casting an hour ago, so now we're ready to break it out and see if we had any success. It's still going to be plenty hot. And there it is. Scrape some of this off a little bit. Now remember there's a core in here. So what you're seeing right here is the core. A little metal went around it, but that's all going to break right off. Knock off any loose sand. Then we'll examine it for flaws. Take a little wire brushing. Now this is going to take about an hour or so to cool before I want to uh, quench it in water. This is the sprue right here where I poured the metal. This is a riser that was going to be used to control shrinkage, but I don't see much shrinkage here or here. I expected a real big dip here, but I don't see that right now. Okay, we'll let that cool a little bit and get right back to it. This is the first warm day of spring. It's the first week in March, and I actually can get outdoors, and that's why I poured this today. Okay. I'm going to knock the cores off, the ends of the cores off, and see that's that was sand, that's just a little bit of scrap metal there. Do the same thing here. And the core has become rather collapsible now that it's uh, burnt out, and so I will just gouge it out with this huge screwdriver, and we'll have a pile of sand. You could use an old drill too, but you can see it's, it's crumbling. That is one of the features that you want in a core sand, or in a core, is collapsibility. So you can see this is rather collapsible, but it's still going to be a chore to get it all out of there. Still kind of hot. There's a lot of, uh, remember that was an oil-based sand, so that's what all that smoke was, was the oil burning out, but most of this brushes right off. Okay, I'm down in the basement shop now again, and in just a moment here I'm going to saw the gate right here and remove the riser and the, and the sprue. And uh, I did remove the core, however there's still some sand in there that's kind of stubborn. I'll need to get a brush and brush that out. The only reason you want to brush that out is it will dull the tools. Now for those of you who are thinking, well he didn't show me make, uh, didn't uh, show us the sand mold and how that was done. Well that was done in one of my other videos, so, and this is a very similar process even though it's a bigger casting. Now the part that I'm holding with my hand here, remember that's all going to be, that's waste stock. And that's just to hold it in the chuck while we do the boring of this end. And then that will be sawed off and this end uh, will be faced. So that's just waste stock. I think I made that quite a bit longer than what I needed to and probably bigger diameter too, but I'd rather have a little extra. Okay, now I'm going to saw that off and I'll be right back. I sawed off the waste stock and this of course can be cut off here and then uh, that'll be remelted because we've probably got uh, two pounds of aluminum there or so. I haven't weighed this part yet, but it's pretty heavy. One of the biggest castings that I've made in my home foundry, and I met, had to make a new crucible or pot in order to melt that much metal. And I was still kind of guessing, and I used just about everything that was in that big crucible, so I'm glad I made it as big as I did. Now, when you put a gate in there, in a heavy casting, make sure you, you make a large gate, because the idea is that you want some of this metal in the riser to feed into the main casting, and if that is small and cross-sectional area, it will freeze off, or that is to say solidify, long before you want it to. 
and then the shrinkage would take place up here where we do not want it and then you'd have a, a scrap casting. Sometimes the risers are almost as big as the castings. By the way, this riser was just an old a cup of uh, country crock margarine or something like that that, that I had in the, on the shelf. Okay, next time you, and I have to file this and sand this down now. One thing I don't like doing. And by the way, um, this is the parting line, what almost looks like it's a seam. And you'll see that on all castings, but we will clean that up. And uh, most of that will be... Well, it will always be visible, but it won't look quite as bad as what you see there. Because that's, that's just where the two halves of the mold came uh, together. And there's the hole. Now, <laughs> you wouldn't want to drill and bore a hole that big from scratch. And that's why we cast the hole in there using a core. And also, if this was solid rather than uh, uh, tubular, you would have shrinkage like you would not believe and also that would be another uh, three, four, five pounds of, of aluminum that would be required. The casting is now chucked up in my closing 12 inch lathe and I was going to use a four jaw chuck but I think the three jaw chuck is going to work. I don't like this much of a jaw sticking out but I think it's uh, safe. Well, it's never safe, but uh, that's the way it's going to be. Now, otherwise, I've got to use the four jaw chuck, which I had gotten out, and uh, you know, there it sets, you know, ready to wait, ready to use. But uh, we're go we're going to use this, and I turned it on, and it runs fairly true um, at a slow speed because we've got an off balance load. Now it's ready to face, and then to bore. Now when you think about this, men, isn't it nice that I have a way to hold on to this? Now there are other ways to do this. This could be held in a four jaw without this uh, waste stock here, or, that, or it could be bored in a milling machine. But uh, to me, I like to think a little bit ahead of time of how I'm going to hold it when I machine it. So that's why I did that. And you know, you can take that for what it's worth. We're back on the closing lathe and we're ready to start facing, well I did start facing, the uh, cylinder. And I'll turn that on and you can see that it runs fairly true. So I've got one of my favorite tools mounted in my favorite Alors tool post, size B. Get one of those if you can possibly afford it. Stop drinking beer for a couple months and you can afford one. Lock your carriage. I'm going to feed it in just a little bit here, and away we go. We're on automatic cross feed. Needless to say, I cannot show all operations, and I certainly can't show all operations in their entirety. So the next time you see this, this will be fully faced. And I'm going to take off uh, approximately a, a sixteenth of an inch or so. There's no given dimension for that. 